happy Wednesday and welcome to the very final edition of World of Science. It's been a super fun journey uh, with everyone at home and doing all these science experiments. And this is the very last one. So uh, if, uh, if you've been enjoying this, I hope you have, I certainly have. And uh, we're gonna wrap it up today with one really cool experiment. Let me make sure my hair is all the way up because uh, I, we are gonna actually be using um, fire today, a little bit of fire, not a lot of fire. And that comes to my disclaimer. Parents, you have to help the kids with this one. No matches without supervision, no candle lighters without supervision. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create um, a little miniature vacuum using differences in air pressure. Super simple, but really, really cool effect is what's gonna happen. So what you'll need is a candle. I'm using a taper candle that I've cut in half. Here's the other half of the taper candle. Um, and you can also use the, um, the tiny candles and the tens. You can use really any kind of candle you want as long as it fits in your container or a glass jar of some kind because we're actually gonna put this over the top of it. Ooh, that still has some water in it. I hope that didn't get my candle wet. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a dish of some kind. Uh, I have a plate that it goes down just a little bit so I can put some water in here. I've put food coloring in the water. The only reason for that is so that you can see this happening better. You can choose any color, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a color, um, but it just helps you to be able to see it a little bit better. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit more water in here. Oh, how I got my taper candle to stick is I just, uh, I heat up the bottom of it uh, with my candle lighter and is, so the wax was melted, then I stuck it to the plate. If you use the candles with the tens, you don't have to worry about that or a candle that has a bottom that's flat. Taper candles do have flat bottoms, but um, since I had to cut it in half, I had to get it to stick somehow. So, doo -doo -doo, we're gonna put a little more water in here just to get the best effect possible. All right, make sure it doesn't overflow. It's gonna be nasty to try to clean up because this is gonna slosh everywhere. That's the problem with food coloring. So what you're gonna do, this is the part where parents, you gotta help the kids with this one, but this has a super cool effect. You can also use matches. Um, I have a candle lighter here that uh, is supposed to be child proof, but also means that it's molly proof sometimes too because it's very difficult to use. So what you're gonna do, see? <laughs> All right, so you're gonna light your candle and just let it, let it get going really good. Make sure it's burning super bright. Um, the flame is really tall and uh, so just wait for a second and th and this is the time that you can think okay so when I put this jar on top of the candle what's gonna happen that's what makes it a science experiment you got to make your hypothesis what do you think is gonna happen so obviously when you put a jar or some kind of lid over a candle it's gonna be starved of oxygen so our flame is gonna go out, but something is gonna happen when the flame goes out, and that's what makes this uh, a really cool experiment. So my candle, it's going pretty good now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over, let's make sure all the water is out so I don't accidentally put out my candle too soon. It's Charlie down there, <laughs> my science experiment buddy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the jar and slowly put it on top of your candle. I mean, slowly as possible. One, so you don't put it out too soon, and two, so you get some of it going. Oopsie, I put it out too soon. Let's relight that. If you put it out too soon, you lose the effect of what's gonna happen, and you'll see what that effect is in just a minute. So, we're gonna put it on here. It's gonna burn bright, and it's being starved of that oxygen, so the flame's gonna go out. But watch what happens to the water when the flame goes out. The water starts to rise in the bottom. I don't know how well you can see that and the differences, but what's happening is you're getting differences in air pressure inside and outside of the container. So as the air heats up and expands inside your jar with the candle still lit, uh, you have, um, that air that's really hot in there, it's really all contained. Once that candle goes out, the air cools and it contracts immediately. When you get that contraction, the pressure inside the jar is lower than the pressure that's outside the jar. So you have those pressure differences and pressure likes to be equal, likes to equalize itself. 
Um, and so as that air cools and contracts, that lower pressure forms inside the jar. It's trying to equal the pressure, the higher pressure outside the jar. So how it's doing that is that contraction, it's sucking some of the water up in here until that pressure is equal. If you do this inside a bowl where you can put more water in it, you'll see more of that water start to rise, different shaped jars uh, do different results. Uh, all of the above. And now when I take this off, it's gonna make a little, whoop, that was almost that was almost really bad. But you can see that suction that happened inside of there uh, that's equalizing the pressure. So this is a super fun experiment. It's really hard to visualize pressure. Pressure is one of those scientific um, concepts that, that can be really difficult. And obviously we deal a lot with pressure and pressure differences in meteorology and weather. So this is one really cool way that you can visualize how pressure works, how pressure equalizes itself. So we'll do it one more time. Hopefully you guys can see the effect well enough. So we got our candle going. Let's make sure I got all the water out of here. One thing you wanna to do too is make sure that the jar has as much of a seal against the bottom of the plate or whatever you use as possible. So our flame is out and now the water starts to rise. So there you go. This one, uh, the water isn't rising too, too much. I think uh, my plate isn't as flat, so it's not exactly flesh against there like it should be, but we're still getting that effect. And I'm kind of scared to take this out again because it sloshed so much last time. Yeah, so you still get that effect. Again, if you use something that um, uh, can hold more water or use a different shaped jar, um, a, an Erlenmeyer flask is great for this. I don't have one of those, but with the skinny neck and the uh, larger base of the jar, that works really, really well with this experiment because uh, you can see the water really shoot up into the skinny part of, of the, the jar. So that is it. That is our last world of science. Um, I'm gonna talk to my producer here, Tim. Um, if you can hear me, do we have any questions? Can't believe this is the last one. No, no questions. No questions. All right. Well, if you have any questions, just reach out to me. If you do this experiment, I'd love to see a video of it. As always, I've gotten a lot of videos, and that's been so, so cool to see you guys do this at home. For now, thanks for watching World of Science. This is a lot of fun, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to do some more stuff like this back when uh, the school year starts again for all the kids and hopefully it'll look like a more normal school year than the end of this one. But if it's not, we're gonna be here for you guys. All right, have a great Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed World of Science as much as I did and uh, stay happy, stay healthy and stay dry today. It's kind of kind of gloomy outside. <laughs>